seven ways that we recommend you back up your library. An overriding principle and the one mistake that loads of people make. By the end of this short live lesson or the recording, if you're watching it back on YouTube or Facebook, you'll know all you need to know to make sure you never end up losing all your music. And because it's live and because I have our fantastic community right here on this laptop, you can ask questions and I can add extra stuff to the teaching I'm about to give you based on what you give me, which is all cool. However, to let everyone arrive, settle down and get ready for today's show, we're gonna run our 30 second intro. I will see you on the other side. Okay, so backing up your music is a very important thing to do as a DJ. Your records, your music files are your tools of your trade. And just like any author would no way go to bed at night having not backed up the work they've done on their latest novel or article or whatever, it's something that as a DJ you should be doing as well. And so today we're going to talk about the, I think we've got seven ways, six or seven anyway, uh, of doing it. And we're going to talk about a principle called the 3 2 1 principle of backing up your music. And I'm also going to talk about the big mistake that a lot of people make that they don't realize they're making when they're backing up their music and their work. And then at the end of today's lesson, I'm going to talk to you on our chat from YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook. So wherever you're watching, welcome. So look, fire, flood, theft, malicious damage, you know. Uh, an ex-partner throwing all your music out the window onto the lawn below. Back in the vinyl days, I've seen it happen. Whatever it is, if you lose your music, it's horrible. The worst bit is you can't remember what you had. And so you think you've replaced all your tunes after a lot of time and hard work. And then you're at a gig and you look for that one tune and you forgot to replace it because you forgot you had it. It's a horrible thing to do. It's like having a part of you stolen. And so it's really important to have backups of your music right from the very beginning, get into the habit of doing it. And so I'm gonna to talk to you now about the, the one, let's talk about the one mistake most people make because your DJ software, it knows about your music. The second you tell your DJ software, here's my music, right? So let's say you keep your music in a folder. If you're a good DJ, then you'll keep your music nicely organized in one folder called DJ music, for instance, right? You keep your music in a nice folder, well done. And you tell your DJ software about that music. You drag it in, you import it, you go to the files and you start playing it. As soon as you do that, your DJ software knows things about that music. It knows where it is doesn't copy it or anything like that in most circumstances. It just knows where it is. How does it know? It keeps a database where it stores that information. So at the very least, your DJ software is keeping a nice database of where your music is kept. It says this track that this DJ has just played is kept in C drive music folder, right? Whatever. As soon as you analyze that music, and I'm going to guess that as soon as you an analyze your music, is the second it gets analyzed is the second you add it to your DJ software, right? It does that thing, and then it adds the key and the BPM, and the beat grids appear. Well done, you've analyzed your music, right? That's also stored in the database. The analysis it's done, the key, the BPM, any beat grids, especially if you change them, stored in that database. If you add cue points or loops, stored in that database. If you decide to start making playlists, Guess where they're stored? You got it. That's why you can have more than one copy of a track in lots of different playlists, because it's not really a copy of the track. It's just your DJ software saying, okay, this DJ wants to keep a copy of this track here, here, and here, and that's where to find it. Go, go and look on the C drive when you need it, right? All this information needs backing up as well, and a lot of DJs don't back that up. So the first rule here is when you're backing up your music, back up your DJ software's database as well. Now, all you need to do is find the folder on your DJ, uh, on, on, on your system that's called the name of your software. So here's a, a big folder on my system. So this is big because I've got lots of DJ software because I'm a DJ teacher and a journalist, right? But for instance, there's my music. See this folder here with DJ music written in it. And this is my Serato folder. 
As long as I back up that Serato folder and inside here is the database from Serato and all that stuff, you don't need to know that. As long as I make a backup of that folder there and also make a backup of that folder there, which is where I keep my DJ music, as long as I back up those two, I'm good to go, right? So that's the first mistake. Don't be that DJ. Don't make that mistake. Back up your DJ library folder. And it could be called Recordbox or Tractor or Engine DJ. It's going to be called the name of your software. Back up that folder, back up the music, and at the very worst, if the very worst happens, you've got all you need to get back to where you were. Right, so before we move on and look at our seven ways of backing up your music, let's talk about the other thing you need to know about here, which is called the 3-2-1 principle. And the 3 two, one principle is this. You need to have three copies of your music, right? One backup's not enough, because that gives you two copies. The original one on your laptop and one more. That's not enough. You need three, right, in total. You need two of those to be, well, you, they need to be on at least two different types of media. So you can't have three backups on your laptop, right? That doesn't make sense, right? So different types of media. So for instance, we're going to talk about hard drives. If you've got one on your laptop and one on a hard drive, well, that counts. You've now got two different types of media, right? But the one indicates that one of those backups needs to be somewhere else, off-site, away from here. If a bomb dropped on the Digital DJ Tip Studio, God forbid, because I've got a hard drive in my wardrobe at home, I've still got my music safe, right? I might not be safe, but my music is. Hey, let's get the priorities right here. So three, two, one. Three individual copies on at least two different formats and one of them completely off-site, somewhere else, right? We're going to talk about different ways of getting around uh, this uh, in the next seven methods we're going to talk about. But just bear in mind that whatever you choose, because you could choose a different way of doing this depending on your circumstances, uh, on the software you use, on the way you DJ, on the size of your collection, on the speed of your internet. All these kinds of things could affect what you choose as your 321. But as long as you tick the 321 and as long as you back up your database as well as your music, you are golden. So bearing in mind all those things, let's now talk about the seven ways. Well, way number one you've already got because guess what? You've got a computer and it's on your computer, right? You've got that copy there. If you DJ with Tractor, DJ with Recordbox or Virtual DJ or Serato or DJ Pro, you've got it all on your computer. Both the database and the music is there. That's your first copy. Even if you use Pro Gear, even if you export to a USB drive, we're going to talk about USB drives in a minute, and this is how you DJ. You don't DJ with a laptop. You're still preparing your music on a laptop, right? You're still doing all that exporting from a laptop and so on. Therefore, you still got a copy on your laptop somewhere. That counts. That's your first copy. Good. So now what we need to do for our other six methods of backing up is find two more methods, because we've already got one on our laptop, that tick those boxes to give us the three, two, one, right? So let's talk about them. My second one I've already shown you, a hard drive. This is a, this is a four terabyte SSD hard drive. It's cost about 700 pounds, I think. I use this for video. However, you don't need to spend that much. 70, 80 dollars will get you a hard drive big enough to back up most collections, right? This is the classic way of doing it. You plug a hard drive with a wire into your laptop and you drag your music folder and you drag your software folder from Serato Recordbox. So you let it all back up, you unplug it, you go put it somewhere. If you buy two of those and you take one home with you from work or to work, so you've got two hard drive backups, one where you keep your laptop in your same DJ studio in your room at home, whatever, and the other one at work, hey, you've just done your three, two, one. Two cheap hard drives, job done. Why do we need to go any further? Well, we don't, but we're going to because there's a few disadvantages to that. One, you've got to do a whole backup every time, and if your library's quite big, you're sat there waiting for it to back up. But secondly, you've got to remember to do it, right? So as we move on, you'll see that certain methods we're about to talk about allow you to automate this stuff and allow you to do it a bit quicker or a little bit more of a clever way. But essentially, that will do, right? So as long as you can set a reminder in your calendar, and as long as you're organized, that's enough. And a lot of people do just that. So just moving on from that slightly, things like this. A USB pen drive or even an S, let's hold it up there, it's gonna go out of focus, but even a little SD card, right? This is a 64 gig SD card. I've got, I've got a 256 SD card somewhere. It's quite a lot of music you can hold on one of those. If you 
want to, you can back up on these as well. You don't need to back up on these. You could have one of these on your key ring with your music backed up, for instance, in your pocket. I wouldn't do that, but hey, you know, there's reasons why you might want to use one of these. But the reason I'm talking about those is that there's one other mistake people sometimes make because they think, okay, I DJ on Pioneer Pro Gear. I therefore I'm exporting to USB to use on this kind of gear or even SD card to use on this kind of gear. That counts as a backup. It doesn't. Not really, because it can be quite hard to get everything, the database and the music back off one of those into a blank copy of your software should something happen to your laptop. Just trust me on that, people have problems with it. And the same with Engine DJ is another big system that does that. Don't think that your export, and also you might not have all your music on it, of course, but don't think that the version you've done to take to your gig with you counts as a backup. It doesn't. It's not a good backup to have. I mean. In an emergency, it's better than nothing, but it doesn't really count. So that's one reason I'm mentioning USBs and, S and uh, SD cards is that, uh, yes, you can back up to them, but treat it like any normal backup, not the same as you would treat an export that you've done in your DJ software for DJing on. Right, so that's it, USB flash drives and SD cards. So the next one is uh, network attached storage or NAS, you know, Synology and that kind of company that create these kind of like intelligent boxes that you plug into your ethernet, plug into your home network, plug into your router. And you, uh, people often use these for media servers, right? Plex and things like that. So they can have films that the kids can watch in the bedroom and that you can watch in the main room and the, all that kind of thing. These can be very good as long as you don't try and use them in a way that's slightly cleverer than backing up. You see, you can use these to back up like with Time Machine on a Mac and all that kind of thing. You can use these. These are quite often quite clever ways of backing up stuff on your computer. And that's great if you stop there. Because the thing, the problem that some DJs uh, come across or the thing they try and do that sometimes breaks this kind of thing is that they say, okay, I've got like say Serato on here, right? And I can back it up to a network attached storage at home. And then I've also got another computer at home there I could also run Serato on that and access the same Serato collection, right? That'd be cool, wouldn't it? Or Tractor or whatever. You have got a big risk there of actually corrupting your database and losing rather than backing up your data. Because DJ software, with one exception, is not designed to work in that way. It's not designed to work with a master copy of your library that is accessed by different versions of the software. No DJ software does that, apart from the exception, which we'll come to in a bit. So unless you know your software is designed for that, don't do it. Yes, back up to a NAS, but treat it as a backup. Treat it as a one-way backup. The advantage of that is that there's great apps that you can run on that kind of uh, storage that can automate it for you and that can incrementally back up. And that means it won't every time back up the whole lot. Like if you've got a terabyte of music and a huge software database, that's a lot of time to back up. And it will cleverly only take the stuff that's changed, right? Rather than having to back up the whole thing every time. So there's advantages, but just be careful not to try and make your DJ software do something it wasn't designed to do. Right, so we've already covered the one version on your computer already, great, that's number one, using physical storage like a hard drive or SSD card, uh, sorry, SD cards or um, USB drives. Uh, then we just covered NAS, the idea of using a NAS. So the next one would be to, it's almost like a way of adding to the ones we've already talked about. And this is using backup software, right? So we've already mentioned Time Machine, it's a Mac backup solution. Also Acronis True Image is very popular. Carbon Copy Cloner uh, is very popular. These are solutions that are designed to be way bigger than DJ backups, to back up everything on your computer, right? So you could have a permanently attached hard drive or NAS or even have it backing up to a second drive in your computer or on your computer. But it's just a copy, right, of everything. And that can be great. Again, it's automated. Again, once it's set up, you can, to an extent, forget it. But just decide whether it's ticking the three, two, one boxes. Like, for instance, if it's in the same laptop, then it's not ticking the two boxes, which is two separate types of media. Uh, if it's still on site, it's not ticking the remote box, right? So just decide what it's doing. But that can work with USBs, SDs, permanently attached hard drives, uh, network attached storage, all of that stuff. Uh, so those kind of things, if you're tech savvy, can be a good way of automating it and stopping you having to remember to do it. Now, the next one is a very popular one, and that is just to use a generic cloud service like iCloud, Dropbox, Google Drive. You know, there's loads of them. We've all got them. 
We all use them. So they can be quite tempting. And indeed, over the years, I've used Dropbox a lot for a backup. I probably still have a backup of my music library on, on Dropbox. Um, they are good if you, again, just like hard drives, if you've got fast internet and you remember to do it, they tick the one of three, two, one, which is off site, right? You don't have to put it onto a hard drive and take it home. You can just back up to the cloud. It's off site, it's done. Of course, there's a subscription involved. Of course, you also need to have decent internet. But if you, have got one of these, it can be a great way of doing it, right? No, no need to worry any further. And if you have the offline app, or rather the local app that goes with your particular service, then you can have it doing that stuff in the background incrementally. Uh, but again, just be careful not to touch that stuff away from the main DJ laptop. In other words, don't log onto your Dropbox on another laptop and think, oh, I've got Serato on here. I can use that, I can use that. Dropbox backup I've got because again you might cause problems. Another thing to be aware of with this kind of cloud file system is that they're not designed primarily for you to back up valuable data because if you have your music library say on your Dropbox just to pick an example and you are you connect to your Dropbox on your phone. That is not a phone, but I'm holding it because it's about the same size. You connect to Dropbox on your phone and you're listening to the music. You say, oh, I don't like that song and you delete it. Well, that could really mess up your DJ library because it will delete it everywhere you've got that Dropbox account connected. So just be careful if you're going to use cloud storage to back stuff up, not to um, accidentally delete stuff or let other people have access to it where they might accidentally delete stuff because it, it, it will be gone. And so, you know, about the idea of a backup is it's really safe. So, so keep it safe if you're going to do it that way. Now, another way of backing up, and I've actually got this on this computer. I should have opened it beforehand to show you, but hopefully I can open it now. Another way of handling backups is um, we recently reviewed this. There's a service called My DJ Cloud. Uh, so this is My DJ Cloud. So My DJ Cloud is quite clever. It's asking me to uh, click resume because I've just updated to a new version of it. My DJ Cloud is quite clever because My DJ Cloud automatically backs up from your chosen software, you tell it your software, it automatically backs up both the music, any crates you've got, I've got no crates on this version of Serato, and the library as well. So this is going to back up all the things that we talked about, all your cues and loops and so on, in the background, automatically, incrementally, you pay one subscription, as long as you've got internet, it's just done. You leave it running on your computer, it will just do that cloud backup for you. And the beauty of that is it won't do it when you're DJing because it's clever and it, it's just designed by DJs to back up DJ collections for us people who are forgetful and we know we're not gonna do it and all that stuff. So you might wanna have a look at that, it's called My DJ Cloud. There are other services that will take your library and put it in the cloud, but to me that's the most robust one for solid backup. And so, Take a look at it. As I say, there's a review of my DJ Cloud on digital DJ tips that I did recently. You can go and take a look at that. So that's kind of like the Google Dropbox iCloud version, but just done for DJs with a few of the disadvantages removed and a few advantages added. By the way, before we go um, any further, I want to point out that um, I did mention it because I left an open loop. I said earlier that the only DJ software that will let you have a cloud library, a master library, and then access it from anywhere is Recordbox. Recordbox has got a, a subscription where you can use your Dropbox or your Google Drive to have your library um, where you can access it from your phone or from multiple versions of Recordbox on your laptop and stuff. Again, if you're careful, that possibly counts as an offline backup, but you've got to be careful uh, not to accidentally delete things from it and so on. If it were me, I'd be careful about treating that as a backup, but just to let you know, that's there for Recordbox users. No other DJ software can do it yet, which is curious. We all like to have our DJ library on more than one thing, right? It's cool, but don't try and do it. Uh, don't try and do it if your software won't do it. You could cause issues. Right, okay, so there's lots and lots of ways of backing up. Remember three, two, one, three copies, <laughs> two, <laughs> it's hard to put your fingers like that, uh, two different media types uh, and one of them definitely off-site. 
and you won't go too far wrong. I want to talk to you about this now because as ever, I know you're going to educate me as much as I've educated you. You're going to give me software names and you're going to ask uh, questions which mean that the written version of this on Digital DJ Tips uh, is going to be better because of it. So uh, let's go over to you and talk backing up your DJ library. Hello folks, how are we all today? Hello to our regulars, hello to Baynard and to Giga Armand and to David and Doe and Kesha in the Windy City, to DJ Bells, DJ Ginormous, is that Christmas Bells? Uh, to our uh, crowd over on the Global DJ Network Facebook group, hello to you, uh, hello to uh, Lee, uh, and uh, Lee's, Lee's doing my work for me, reminding me of things to remind you of, which is cool. I won't forget what you told me, Lee. Thank you. Uh, in fact, should I do it now? I think I, think I ought to, or else I probably will forget. Listen, people, we have got uh, the Digital DJ Census, which is something we do every year, uh, which is a way of you telling us about your DJ life in the past 12 months. How's it been for you? Uh, and it's really cool. It's something that we, as I say, we do it every year. Uh, and you can find out all about it on Digital DJ Tips. Head to digitaldjtips.com. Uh, go to any of our posts anywhere. And in that post, uh, somewhere towards the bottom, you will see this big pop-up that says, win. Uh, and click on it and that will take you to the Digital DJ Census. It's a survey that you can fill in now and for the rest of the year, it closes just uh, after Christmas. And then you can, as a thank you for taking our DJ survey, win one of these four amazing systems. A producer package from Focusrite Innovation, a Denon DJ standalone setup, a Pioneer DJ standalone setup or a Rain uh, set up there and they come with speakers and headphones and all the cool stuff that you can see there. So this is a really good prize uh, for us to thank you for taking part in our census. When you click on that advert, it will take you to this page here uh, where we ask you lots of fun questions. Uh, you fill them all in. Tell us about you. Tell us about your DJ life. And as a thank you, we enter you in the prize draw. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, and uh, yes, thank you for reminding me about that, um, Lee. Uh, yeah, do it, folks. Uh, you can go to djtips.co slash win. djtips.co slash win. Uh, I haven't actually got round to putting uh, the announcement of the census on the website yet, which is why I had to tell you where to go and find it there. Uh, but that will be happening when I get a second. Uh, right, okay, cool. Back to talking about backups, back to talking about your ways of backing up your DJ library. Share your stories as well. If you've had any disasters, tell me, and I will use them to warn people that backing up is important. Right, okay, uh, El Flores says, I once tried the Rekordbox cloud backup and a menu popped up saying the library is gonna get modified and I clicked okay, fair enough. I had to relocate tons of music after and only a few tracks ever uploaded to the cloud. You've gotta be really careful with these services to understand what's going on and I agree. The Rekordbox system is actually very good but it is clunky, uh, it's not perfect for sure. So thanks for sharing that and I hope you got that sorted out in the end of course. Um, Pop on YouTube says, I use SD cards in my MacBook Pro for my club and new music and a survival kit with all the classics and stuff needed to make any corporate or club night. Each laptop has a survival kit. Oh, I see, yeah. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to swear now, but I'm going to swear for the purposes of um, comic relief. So if you're watching at work or with kids, turn the volume down a bit. Um, I was once, uh, at this time of year, and this is what I'm going to say, I was once with my friend Wayne who runs a charity, a DJ charity in London. And we were on a boat going up and down the River Thames and he was DJing. It was a load of travel agents on their Christmas party. Uh, and it's like a party boat. And he had a folder. He called it the, he called it the shit folder. Um, and he ha always had this on his SD card and he carried it around with him to all his gigs. So he's always had it there just in case he needed it. Uh, and he did make me laugh because he said, Phil, it's only half eight and I'm already on the order. But that's what happens at Christmas when you're DJing to a travel agent Christmas party, possibly. Anyway, yep, so a survival kit. I love it. Thank you for that pop QC. Uh, so, uh, I have my music backed up, says Kesha, on four external hard drives. You're doing the 421, I love it. Um, so, um, 700 pounds, says DJ Ginormous. Phil must be strong. Libra, pounds, UK currency, um, thousand dollars. Right, DJ Styles, good morning, Phil. In my, in my opinion, this is the most important live that you've done this year. I have two four terabyte hard drives and two one terabyte hard drives. I keep no music on my laptop. All the hard drives have a backup. You're on it, you're on it. Good to hear that, thank you. 
so Pioneer SD card readers won't accept more than 16 gigabytes, says Pop. Well, look, that's another reason for us talking about not using your backups that you've done for your DJ world, you know, for taking to your gigs, not treating those as your master backups. I think it's a good idea not to do that, so thanks. Uh, right, okay, backups. Nigel says just uh, good morning, Phil and family. Uh, and season's greetings. Thank you very much. And nice to see you here live. And the same to you, Lou. Thank you. It's been lovely to have you here all year. It is Christmas, isn't it? I should have bought a Christmas hat. I should have bought something to uh, to make all of this a little bit more festive. Should we try and make it a bit more festive? I'm not sure how we can do that. Um, let's see what we've got. Let's see what we've got. Let's see what we've got on the system. I could certainly maybe make it a little bit more. Let's try. Let's try and make it festive, people. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. What background should we go for? Should we go for a... Um, Christmas trees. Should we try and find some Christmas trees and pop them in the background? Seeing I haven't got a silly hat uh, and this, uh, this system won't allow me to do that. I know it's not Christmas for everyone, people. I know that. Uh, but uh, it is for us. So we're going to go for Christmas. Right. OK. Uh, let's do that before we get on talking more about backups. Uh, let's, get this, uh, let's get this sorted. My team are just like, Phil, what are you doing? What are you doing, mate? You're live talking about a serious DJ topic and now you're starting to put a Christmas tree behind you. But look, it's Christmas. I want to. I'm going to. You're not going to stop me, people. <laughs> I just think this is, uh, this is typical me, right? Start something you can't finish. Can't even get to my desktop. There it is. Right, OK, let's get this done. Let's get this done, people. Get a Christmas tree on our desktop and then drag it onto the background behind me there. Here it is. Right, come on then. Let's do it. Let's get the green screen up. Let's Christmas tree ourselves up. There we go. Hooray. Happy Christmas, everyone. Or happy holidays if you don't celebrate Christmas. It's going to have to do. Uh, right. OK. Back to the serious stuff. Hey, it's once a year, people. Forgive me. Back to the uh, back to the serious stuff. Right. So what are you talking about when it comes to backing up your DJ music? Let's get back to you. Uh, and uh, the next comment that we have is from Nexu, who says, as a former sysadmin and programmer, I have my own rsync script that backs my music files to any cloud storage, G Drive, Dropbox and to and from external USBs. Yes, you're, you know, you're on it more than most people, uh, which is cool. However, most people um, aren't that tech savvy, which is actually why things like the uh, the uh, My DJ Cloud, I think, is quite is quite a nice addition to the whole ecosystem out there because it does it is a very good set and forget way of doing it. Um, so, uh, out of all of these methods, which one would you personally use if you were DJing today? Says Cabe's Phil. I would uh, personally have a and I do have a backup on a hard drive and also have a backup in the cloud just on a Dropbox, just drag, dragged into a Dropbox, left there, nothing else, not, not touched. That's my personal way of getting the, the 3, 2, 1 sorted. Um, Cadillac Black on Facebook. I definitely need some assistance on doing a backup of my library. I have a MacBook Pro with Serato and Virtual DJ with a library on an external SSD. I will use Carbon Copy Cloner to copy from one SD to another S uh, one SSD to another SSD. Uh, but I've got to figure out how I can make sure that the backup SSD works on my backup MacBook that I would use if my main computer acts up. So yeah, you're now coming across the issue of trying to use a backup for more than a backup, right? You're trying to use a backup for um, uh, uh, for kind of like, hell, it's just gone wrong, I need to DJ now, right? And that's different to, right, my computer's been stolen, I've now got to get it all back onto a master computer and carry on DJing again. And it's difficult with virtual DJ and it's difficult with Serato because they're not designed to use libraries in that way. You need to understand the way Serato virtual DJ, interact with an external library and what the steps are for you to take that library and tell the software, look, here is my database. I want you to use this database and here's where the music is now. I want you to relocate it or to, to look for it there. Uh, it's more than we can go into here, but well done on, on, on figuring that out. There's actually some quite good documentation in uh, VDJpedia, which is the virtual DJ kind of wiki and also on Serato about restoring from a backup on the Serato documentation on their website. So do take a look at that. There is stuff there to help you with that. 
Um, DJ Ginormous says engine will engine DJ will sync to Dropbox. I'm not sure if that's quite the same. I know they changed the way engine DJ syncs recently. It used to have it definitely didn't sync your whole collection to Dropbox as a proper backup. I'm not sure exactly how it works now uh, with engine DJ. So I need to look into that a little bit more. Um, so John says I've suggested this before. And I maintain that Vice Versa Pro file comparison software is incredible. It allows you to be sure all your backups are the same by comparing folders or entire drives. Well, thank you for that tip. I told you that education uh, works both ways uh, and I've learned something there. Thank you for that. Uh, so um, who else has got something to add to our chat about backups? Um, most of you are just saying, yeah, I use more or less some of the things you've said. So for instance, Keith, has a backup on a USB, but also keeps a backup in the cloud. Again, you've got your 321 done there, haven't you, Keith? Um, Mixmaster G, carbon copy cloner, and three SSD drives is the backup to my whole life, not just my uh, music collection. So thank you for sharing that, Mixmaster G. Um, Paul, I haven't had to do this in a while, but tools like Sync Toy, Sync Toy, were very useful to have multiple locations and backups that kept your files synced up. So thank you for sharing that. And Stevie B, this is going to be our last comment today. I use vinyl and CDs. Until this day, I've got a Windows laptop. I want to download music onto USB stick and produce music. What would be the best to format for doing this? Uh, right, okay, so you're going to need to back the, the most thing I'm going to say, the first thing I'm going to say is once you've done it, back it up. Once you've got your vinyl and CDs digitized, back them up based upon what we've been talking about here. Uh, I would use FLAC, F-L-A-C, I would use FLAC. It's lossless, it allows you to, to attach artwork, it works on all DJ systems nowadays. If I was digitizing vinyl and CDs, that would be the format I would go for. People, we are done here. Thank you very much for joining us. Happy holidays wherever you are and however you're celebrating. Have a great couple of weeks. We're not actually uh, going to be live after Thursday, which is our very, very last show uh, before the new year, until the 9th of January. So come and join us on Thursday. I don't know what we'll do. Maybe we'll put Christmas hats on and do something silly. Uh, but we are, are going to be here on Thursday, and then that is it for the rest of the year. So nearly done, but not quite. I will see you then. But meanwhile, thanks for joining us. Get good, get out there, make the moments, and I'll see you very soon. Till next time, bye-bye.